Hello, my name is Christian and I'm a graphic designer based in Massachusetts. I just want to go over some typography effects. This was something I learned from Deke McClellan in his Adobe 101 Mastery course. And I just want to go over how to create these effects that you see here. And I'm just going to duplicate this layer. And I'm just going to show you that all of this text is editable. So we can change the, the text and what it says to, let's say, analog. And if I deselect, you can see that it's been updated and changed. I can change what this says. The great thing about this is, you know, you can change the effects as well. If I wanted to change the colors here, I can change the colors. I can change basically everything about this. And I'm not going to show you how to do exactly all of these, but I'll show you how to get started on creating something like this. And you can experiment and create something that you'll enjoy. So I'm going to go into my layer twos here where I have just a text written out that says macro and I'll just delete it and I'll just retype it out. So I'm going to use the type tool here and shortcut is T. I'm just going to click on the artboard and I'm just going to type out macaroon. I'm going to hold down shift to constrain the proportions. And if you're looking to get the black arrow tool, it is up here, uh, shortcut V. So I've got my type here and now I need to prepare it to be set up for these dynamic editable effects. And where we go is the appearance panel. Uh, appearance panel is right here. It's the circle surrounded by a bunch of dots. If you don't see it here, you can always go to Window, Appearance, and the shortcut is Shift F6, and it's checked marked because it's already here, it's already open. And what you'll see is you'll see Type Characters Opacity. And what we want to do is we want to remove the fill and the stroke that's already applied to this. And to do that, we're going to go into the Characters, and by doing that, I'm going to double click on Characters, you can see I've brought up characters here and you can see that we have a fill. I'm going to click on it and get this pull down menu to get to uh, none because we don't want any fill. And now I'm going to click double click on type no appearance to go back into our type. And we have our type here with no fill. So it still says macaroon. We just can't see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to the add new fill button in the appearance panel. Click on that. And we're going to get a new fill here that's black. I'm also going to click on the add new stroke here. I'm going to change that color to green just so you can see it. I'll increase the, the weight up to something crazy like eight. And now we've got a stroke and a fill. And you can add as many stroke and fills as you'd like. I can demonstrate that here by just adding a couple more fills and adding a couple more strokes. And you can also, I'm just going to pull down this menu so I can see everything. You can also uh, hit the eyeball here to make the stroke or fill anything, any element, element that you have here invisible. So you can reduce that. And also what you can do is that there's a stacking order here, similar to the layers panel, that the topmost item will be on top of everything or the closest to your eye. So if I want this stroke to be behind the black fill or underneath it, do that by bringing it underneath. And now you can see that the black is on top of the stroke and the stroke is no longer cutting into the shape of the letter. This is a nice dynamic effect. We still have the editability, right? We can still change the text. Um, but how do we do some extra effects? So let's go back. And I just want to delete all these extra ones for now. They're just clogging up. All right, so I've just change the font here and change the letter spacing. It's not perfect, but it's good enough to demonstrate what I want to go with going forward. And what you can do is you can add a number of effects. So the first one I want to go over is to create a fill on top of this and add a gradient to this. So I'm going to go to our fill here and you can uh, add a new fill. But what I want to do here is actually duplicate selected item. And this adds another fill that's black. So next what I want to do is I want to add another fill on top of this black. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a gradient. So what I'll do here is instead of adding a new fill, I can just go to uh, copy selected or duplicate selected item and go to duplicate selected item here. That's going to duplicate a fill. I'm going to click on this drop down and I'm actually going to go to a gradient, black and white. Great. And now to edit the gradient further, I'm going to go into the gradient panel here. 
And if you don't have the gradient panel here, you can always go to the window gradient. A shortcut is Control F9 or Command F9 on a Mac. And within the gradient panel here, you can edit a number of things. The first thing I want to edit is the angle to be 90 degrees, so it's going top to bottom. And I want the highlight to be on top, not on the bottom. I can drag these out and swap them, like so. Or you can click on this button here, Reverse Gradient. And I want the highlight on top, like this. But what I don't want is I don't want white. Uh, let's say I want yellow. And I think the effect is a little too strong. I want to decrease the opacity to 80%. And I'm just going to increase where the black comes in. The great, just a little highlight on top. And I think I'm going to actually decrease it down to 60%. And then like, like so. So I've got just a very light highlight gradient on the top of these letters. And that's how you would add a gradient to our letters here. Now, another thing you can add, if we go back to our parents panel, if, let's go to add a new fill. And by default, it's going to select the previous one. I'm going to change it to a dark gray. And it's on top of everything else, which is not what I want. I want it in between here. You can't really see much of a difference. So I'm actually going to go back to our gradient, change this to 0%. And now you can see the grays underneath. When I return back to the appearance panel, what I want to do here is I want to apply an effect so that the letter cuts in. So I'm going to go to the e add new effect here, the FX. Go to path offset path and here in the offset path menu I'm going to offset it by a certain pixel value but first I want to preview it and this increases it I don't want to increase it I actually want to decrease it by let's say two pixels and I think I actually need to do it by a little bit more or actually less maybe by one pixel no let me try three And let's click OK. I'm going to zoom in here. It looks like I've applied the offset to the type and not to our specific fill here. So what I can do is I can take this effect here and drag it and bring it within the fill. And this is the effect I wanted. I wanted a gray shape within, and it goes in by the three pixels. So if I zoom out here, you can see we're getting this effect. Now what I want to do is I want to create another highlight on the bottom, but just on the gray. If we zoom in, we can see that this yellow highlight goes on top of the black and the gray. But what I want to do is I want to just create a little highlight here, right on the bottom where the gray is, and it, but the, not on top of the black. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our fill here, our gray fill, make sure that I have the type selected. I'm going to go to duplicate selected item, gives in another version of this and I'm going to change it to a white and black gradient and now I'm going to go back to the gradient panel and I'm going to go to 90 degrees and I want the white on the bottom which is perfect I'm going to change this to 0% and I'm going to bring it all the way here so we get just a very faint white on the bottom and bring it even closer I'm actually just going to change the color to white as well I'm going to deselect it, and now you can see that it has a little highlight on the bottom. And if we zoom in, it's only on top of the gray because the path is offset, it's brought in, as opposed to this one that is uh, set up as the fill that covers the black and the gray. Now let's go, let's see what other effects we can apply. Right now we've applied a fill and a stroke, and we've applied gradients, and the offset path as well. Now if we go back into the Appearance panel, and we go to Effects, uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to select this fill, I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to grab this fill here, and I'm going to apply an effect. 
And one thing we can do is you can uh, have a blur, you can, you can have glowing edges, uh, you can warp the text, you can have a drop shadow, and you can even uh, transform the text or move it around. So what I want to do first is I'll actually transform it. And we have the transform effects here. I'm going to hit preview so I can see what I'm doing. And I have a black fill here. And if I change the horizontal move value, you can see that the black behind this is being moved horizontally, 30 pixels. Vertically, I can also change it. So if you wanted to have uh, this kind of effect, this is how you would achieve it. Uh, you can also change the angle that it's rotated on. And you can make copies of this instead of just doing uh, one. So I can have this effect copied multiple times. Um, I don't really want to do too much. This is a little too extreme. So I'm just going to bring this in a little bit to 20 pixels, 20 pixels. I'm going to click OK. And I don't really like this effect. It's not really doing much for us. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the fill. I'm going to change it to this green. And let's say instead of just wanting the text to be moved to the back. I want kind of a uh, an effect where the letter is kind of bleeding or there's a transition between the two. And if I go back into our fill here, make sure we have our type selected. I hit this arrow to bring down more of our options. We can see that we have the transform and it's and when we hover over it. It says click to edit effect, which is what we want to do. And instead of having 20 pixels by 20 pixels, I want to decrease that to, let's say, one pixel by one pixel. If I hit the preview, you can barely see what's going on. It has a fill behind everything that's moved one pixel by one pixel, but the stroke is on top of it, so we can't see it just yet. But if we create 10 copies, it has 10 copies that each are one pixel by one pixel to the right and to the bottom from each other. And it keeps going and going and going, creating this effect like 15 is fine. I'm gonna click OK. And you can see we get this kind of effect. I can duplicate our fill here by making sure our text is selected, making sure the fill is selected. Go to Duplicate Selected Item. I'm gonna choose the bottom most version, change it to a darker sh shade of green, bring this down, and go to transform. And now let's say I want to do 20. Click the preview. You can see that it brings a dark green to the background. Click OK. Another thing you may want to do is you may want to apply like a warp. And I'll show you what that looks like. So what you can do is you can scroll all the way up to the type. Go to effects. And go to warp. And you can select on any of these because they'll bring up the warp panel. And now you can see that we are in the warp options menu here. We have a number of different options. So this is arc lower. We could do arc upper. And you can manipulate the distortion. You can kind of manipulate these values to get a desired visual effect for your typography. Um, like I said, just to reiterate that you do this in the appearance panel. You can add a new stroke here, add a new fill, and then apply effects to individual elements, individual fills and strokes, or you can apply it to the whole uh, piece, the whole type typography piece. And you can toggle the visibility to show and hide certain effects or even fills. So if I wanted to get rid of, let's say, the topmost yellow highlight, I can do that here. I can also get rid of the bottom highlight if I wanted just this effect. Or if I think I've gotten way too crazy, way too far, just want to go back to this, we can. And of course, this is all while still being able to edit the text. So we can change it all. See, I can change the letters. And I can bring back all the other effects. So this is great if you are uh, working on something, you're showing it to a client or your teacher, and you're not sure if they'll like it or not. So you can always go back if they say, oh, I don't like green. You can change the colors up. You think it's too extreme or actually the name of my business has changed. Or if this is a graphic that you can use 
multiple times for, let's say, a sports team or something uh, where the name of an athlete gets changed. This is a great way to keep the effect editable and dynamic uh, so you can uh, continue working on it in the future. And just to show you guys some of what I was working on before with these effects, hopefully you guys learned something new and can have some fun creating some typographic effects that are editable, dynamic, and visually appealing. I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, let me know if you learned something or what you would like to learn in the future. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.